Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and in this video clip I want to discuss first order reactions. These are very common reactions in nature, for example the clearance of a drug from the metabolism or radioactive decay uh, are examples of first order reactions. So how does it work? Let's say we have a, a reactant uh, R here and this reactant is consumed in a reaction and I uh, write it as something like that. Then we can formulate a rate equation and we can say um, the rate of this reaction, so rate equals the change in the concentration of the reactant per time unit equals minus. This minus is because it means consumption of this reaction. So I write it as consumption minus K. This is a rate constant. rate constant times the concentration of the reactant. Sometimes we put a little one here and this indicates that it is a first order reaction. Now this is a differential equation and I don't want to show you how we solve this uh, equation. The solution, however, of this equation is ln concentration of the reactant at the end of the reaction when we stop observing it, and I write it as ln r final minus ln of the concentration of the reactant at the beginning when we start our observation. So I write this as initial equals minus k times the time when we stop our observation. So I write this as final minus t when we start our observation. So that is initial. And this is the general uh, solved equation for this rate equation for first order reaction. Now we can write this in slightly different forms. We can use the rules of logarithm and we can write ln of, and I'm very lazy, I don't write uh, the, um, the brackets and full final. I just simply write r final minus divided by r initial equals minus k times t final minus t initial. And if we want to get rid of the ln, uh, all we need to do is we can e both sides. So we have e to the power of ln r final over r initial equals e to the power of minus k t final minus t initial and we know that e and ln cancel each other out because they are the inverse mathematical operations. So we have r final over r initial and we understand that these are the concentrations equals e to the power of minus k t final minus t initial. And all three equations, this one, this one, and this one, are absolutely equivalent uh, to each other. So there's no difference in these uh, equations. Okay, so how would we go about and look at a, a first order reaction? Let's have a look at the characteristics of first order reactions. So. Here is a typical uh, time course for first order reaction. We plot the time uh, on this side and we plot the concentration of the reaction on this side. 
And uh, when we then plot on a graph time versus the uh, concentration of the reactant, we will get uh, a curve like this. So here on the x-axis we've got time and on the y-axis we've got the uh, concentration of the reactant. And this is a very characteristic feature of a first order reaction where we get this curve. Now curves are always uh, very tricky to deal with and uh, we can therefore uh, not really do a lot with a curve, but we can use the equation for a first order reaction and try to transform that into uh, a straight line. Now let's have a look at that. So we said that uh, the uh, one of the equations for first order reaction is ln a final minus ln a initial equals minus k times t final minus t initial. We can uh, rearrange this equation and we get ln a final equals minus k times and for this one here we can say t initial usually is set to zero so we can set k times t plus ln a initial. Uh, so this one goes here. So this one, uh, this equation here is the uh, equation for a straight line. So we have y equals minus mx plus c. And now when we plot uh, our data, but not plot them in the form of uh, just simply uh, the uh, constant. And I probably should change everything to an R because we started with an R. Uh, so what we can do is we can uh, plot ln R versus time and we should get a straight line for that. So here is uh, the plot. Now this point here, this would uh, give us the ln r initial. That is our starting concentration of the reactant. Now please note it is ln of uh, the initial concentration of the reactant and not the concentration of the reactant. Also note that since we have ln, we have no units on this uh, axis. The gradient of, of, this, of this graph here, so for example this one here, the gradient gives us minus the rate constant. And that's quite useful. And another quite important point uh, turns up here and it shows that this graph can go into the negative range. And we need to remember that it's actually ln that we are dealing with and then ln can be, ne can, can be negative. So ln of r can be smaller than zero. It can be negative. It doesn't mean that the reactant concentration is negative. It just means that the ln uh, yeah, of the reactant concentration is negative. Let us quickly explore the units for the rate constant, so k in this case, and we can do that very easily by looking at the units of the rate equation. So we said that we have d R, that's the concentration, the change in concentration per time equals uh, minus K times the concentration for the reactant. We don't have to worry too much about the negative uh, sign here because that doesn't contribute to the, um, to the unit. And here, this one here would be a concentration. And the unit for this one here would be time equals k 
K times concentration. Maybe I should take this away. So t times concentration, and uh, all we need to do is solve for K. So we get K equals concentration over time times concentration. That's this one here. And this gives us one over time. So the unit for a first order reaction is always one over time. Another important and very interesting feature of a uh, uh, first order reaction is what is called the half-life of this reaction. Now what does that mean? If we look at our graph of a first order reaction, so here where we plot the concentration of our reactant versus time, we said we get this uh, nice curve. Now, if we look at uh, this graph, what we see that if from if to go from 120 millimolar to 60 millimolar to down here, this takes a certain amount of time. So this is here this time span to go from 120 to 60. Now to go from 60, from this one here, to 30, again, half of it, we have this time span here. And if you look at it, this one here is the same as this one here. And to go from 30, as we have here, to say 15, which uh, would be around here, again, we have a very similar time span. Probably around here, we have a similar time span. So the time span to go from x to x half is always the same. Now, how, uh, why is this the case? So let's have a quick look at our uh, equation. And we said ln final concentration divided by the initial concentration equals minus k times t. And uh, to uh, rearrange that and, and solve it for t, uh, we just uh, get the minus k to the other side and we get t equals ln r final over r initial divided by minus k. Uh, we can use this uh, minus here and uh, bring that up. So that would give us ln r initial divided by r final. Uh, again, these are the rules of uh, logarithm divided by k. Now, uh, we said that uh, r initial is twice the amount of the uh, final concentration of, um, of the reactant. So we can get T equals ln2 final over final concentration divided by K. Uh, we can get rid of this. So we get ln2 divided by k. And now that is quite interesting because this time here does not involve anything related uh, to the concentration of the reactant. In fact, it is basically uh, independent of the reactant. So uh, this actually means, and uh, I want to write that down, t equals ln2 over k and this has a name and this t here is also called the half-life of the uh, reactant and for first order reaction it only depends on k and it's sometimes abbreviated as t half so t half 
is ln2 over k. So uh, very often when we are using, for example, radioactive decay, we don't use k, we use the half-life. So uh, for uh, example, an isotope of uh, phosphorus uh, has a half-life of 14 days. So this is the half-life of that. And we then can very easily calculate our rate constant. So uh, if we rearrange this equation, we get k equals ln2 over the half-life. And from this, we can calculate the, uh, the rate constant. So in this case, it would be ln2 over 14 days. And uh, the unit for that would be 1 over days. And again, that is uh, the unit for the rate constant of a first order reaction. So half-life and rate constant are directly interconvertible with this uh, equation, with this special equation here. This only holds true for a first order reaction. Half-lives don't make any sense for any other kind of reaction. So only use this equation for a first order reaction.